protective assets. Take one. Productive assets take one. Let's move that across there and see how that does. Okay. Hi. My name is Russell Wilkes, R U S S E L L W I L K S, and I run, uh, amongst other things, among, I run a get richer quicker service called the Thrifty Millionaire. And uh, on the, in the description of this video, you can subscribe to my twice, thrice, uh, weekly emailer which is all about getting richer quicker through entrepreneurialism and financial independence and your financial independence micro business um, info products etc what I want to talk to you today about though is productive assets and the the how the easiest way to get richer is to control control productive assets as long as you're free from consumer debt etc and uh, paying yourself first and adopting the three bucket principle and all these kind of things but the the most important thing is to use productive assets to get richer uh, first we've got to define what is a productive asset because accountants bless them uh, most accountants will tell you that an, a, an asset is pretty much anything that you know the, com the table that your computer is on is an asset the car that you drive is an asset your house is an asset of course this is absolute nonsense, total and utter nonsense. Your house is not an asset, it's a liability. Your car is a liability and all your possessions are not assets until you liquidate them for cash or you swap them, trade them for some kind of, some other asset. So what's the definition of a productive asset? And the, produ the productive asset is an entrepreneur's definition of an asset. And what that is, is the, the simple definition is a productive asset is something that pays you more income than it costs to maintain. If you want to put that in plainer language, it pay, puts more money in your pocket than it costs to upkeep. Is that simple enough? So uh, it makes a profit. After all actions, etc., etc., it makes a profit. So there are three types of productive asset, and I'll go through them now. Paper, property, business. Let's just uh, expand on that a little bit. So, paper assets. A paper asset is anything that's like for example a stock or share certificate, a debenture, a bond, a certificate of participation, intellectual property rights, liens, grand rents, uh, freeholds, etc. Anything you own that produces an income that's actually not a business or, prop or property itself. So for example, if you own uh, publishing rights to some songs and those songs uh, get covered by another artist, they'll produce income because of the fact that artists are covering these songs, etc. So you're getting publishing income, but also the catalog itself will increase in value year on year. The same goes for a stock. If you own a, a really good sort of world dominator stock like Johnson & Johnson, for example, that company produces a rising yield, even if it's just a, a tiny percentage per increase per quarter in its yield, its dividend, but it also increases by small amounts in terms of its stock value over the longer term. And that's a productive asset. Same goes for a ground rent. The ground rent is worth a certain amount per year and produces a certain amount of income. So that's the, the, the definition of a paper productive asset. Then you've got property. Now property is things like obviously investment property, residential property, commercial property and things like that. You could also kind of include some sort of land banking as well, but I don't like to because with, with a land banking thing, what you're doing is you're buying, you're speculating on the value, the rise of value of land. And that's not really investing. Speculating is something else. Speculating is almost gambling, to extent, in my opinion. Uh, and the same goes for gold. The only reason to own gold is really as a form of insurance, stroke liquidity, stroke uh, something that retains a certain amount of value historically against other asset, uh, other assets or other things. But you know, if you're speculating the price of gold, then you're basically gambling that the gold is going to go higher etc. The same with houses and land. So me with a productive asset that's property, it's got to wash its own face, which means that it's got to produce more income than it actually than it actually costs to upkeep. 
So if you've got a residential property that's, pay, that's making you 10% yield per year, then great. After all, after all deductions, after all maintenance, except mortgage payments, etc., you're making eight, you know, seven, eight, ten percent uh, yield per year on that property. That's a productive asset. The third one is business. Now, obviously, business, you're in business to make a profit. Whatever business you choose, I would always say to you to to have a uh, a high profit, low volume business which is something that produces large amounts of profits and you don't need massive amounts of sales to do that. So you, you don't necessarily need to be in a commodities business. The commodities business is, uh, for example, um, like a supermarket will sell 10,000 widgets, but they'll only make 33% profit on each one of those widgets. Whereas if you're an information products entrepreneur, you can make you know 1,000% profit on, on every product you, 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 that you do, if you're making those sort of profit levels, you don't need to sell millions and millions of them. But anyway, when it comes to business, let me just tell you that really, as long as the business is making a profit before tax, before tax and all deductions, and obviously deductions, if you're a limited company, all deductions pretty much and all business expenses, etc., can come out of your, can come out of that business before you even pay tax. So you can, you can pay all the wages or dividends and all your expenses and everything else before tax and your, your business is profitable. So those are the three forms of business, uh, three forms of productive asset rather. So you've got paper, property and business. And the paper, as I said, is ground rents, liens, uh, publishing rights, intellectual rights, bonds, stocks, shares, debentures, other forms of financial vehicles, things like that. As I said, property is mostly investment property and commercial property. So residential investment property and commercial property. And it's got to produce, it's got to wash its own face. So it's got to produce more profit than it costs to upkeep. And the third one, as I said, is business. Uh, in terms of business, whatever business you choose to go into will be based on you know what you're into, what you like, what motivates you whether you like to, to do a physical job or whatever. But the most important principles in business is to be the one organizing the work as opposed to doing the work. If you can quickly get to organizing the work as soon as possible, that's brilliant. And also the business has got to be profitable. So it's got to be able to make profit. And also you then look into the, as soon as you, if you start up as a sole trader or something like that, you look into becoming a limited company so you can offset all your liabilities against tax. So those are the three forms of productive asset. My name is, Russell Wilkes, R-U-S-S-E-L-L-W-I-L-K-S. -S -S -E Sign it to the Thrifty Millionaire. There's a form in the description of the video, which is probably beneath. Uh, and also you'll see out there, I've got a load of uh, information products ranging from eBooks and Kindles that are listed on Amazon and Lulu and other things like that, to uh, far, far greater value and, and higher price, much higher priced uh, information products, uh, how-to products about getting richer, quicker, and getting a better, more entrepreneurial, better life for yourself. Uh, I'll do another video soon. Thank you for listening, and uh, ask me questions if you want to. Good luck.